What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because they dropped another briefing. This one is briefing number 50. Wow, the big 5-0. Double feature station Redux AI. Ooh, is this the new police station? Cool. Let's go ahead and hop into it here. It starts off with saying, uh, attention officers, welcome to the 50th edition of our bi-weekly newsletter. To mark this milestone, we will be having an extra long newsletter. We'll be featuring a media write-up of the AI system that Ready or Not uses, as well as a good public look at the other half of our station rework. Starting off with the rework of the station, being the first map that many if not all players will see meaning it's an incredibly important first impression perhaps even more so since the atmosphere of the station and the decrepit state of the player's surroundings reflects the state of Los Tunas as a whole with the combination of clearly repurposed rooms crumbling architecture all filled with high-tech police equipment in stark contrast of their surroundings it effectively communicates the state of the world the player has chosen to immerse themselves in interesting I really can't wait to see what it looks like I wonder if they're utilizing all that stuff stuff that was featured like underneath the level like if you have the free cam you could actually see all the cut stuff that's like behind the scenes can't wait to see it moving on here the station reborn along with the many facelifts that many of the legacy maps are getting we had no attention to leave our players home base in the dirt teasing the level of detail we plan to put it to the rest of the station with part one of the remap we launched with the atom we figured it was time to tease the rest of the work we put it to the map we got our first picture here it looks like a shooting range this is definitely different from this is far different from from what the last one we had this actually looks like a proper shooting range it doesn't seem like it's in like some sort of like underground railway station it actually looks like a proper shooting range well proper in the sense that this is what you get in a rundown building i guess but it looks cool definitely bigger than the last one looks like we got some shutters right here some stairs to go down to it some uh stuff on the walls to prevent the sound from getting out really i think that's what these are, are also if i remember correctly this is cool but underneath the picture it says the shooting range receives a bit of a facelift replacing the claustrophobic stalls with a much more open form design this is definitely a better design in my opinion but moving on to the next thing here we got another picture this looks like some sort of newsroom maybe this is where we could get all that fancy lore that we could probably read off the uh, screens here i've noticed in games that if we look at a lot of the computer screens we could actually see a bunch of stuff relating to a bunch of other maps that's pretty cool I wonder what this is like a picture of is this like the outskirts of the police station maybe curious man i hope they make that whole area like big for us to like explore and stuff i'd definitely be all over it but uh underneath this it says the station surveillance and information gathering suites often cast a wide net with the lspd on the back foot they need all the help they can get make sure to visit the dispatch once in a while wait is this like something that we can interact with that's kind of cool if that's actually a thing i'm all for it i'm all for it underneath this it says in the future many locations within the station will have more nooks and crannies to explore and perhaps even easter eggs to find many will be like the well-known hats and the coffee machine some will have more effect on you your officers and maybe even your gameplay what are you trying to say here are you saying that that doing things in here will actually affect gameplay like make us run a little faster or something like give us a little bit of perks is that what i'm hearing interesting moving on to the next thing here we got what looks like an evidence storage area the little red tape i guess it says evidence i think this is cool do we like fill this up like every freaking mission that we do that would be awesome actually like in the campaign if this fills up every time that you do the missions that would be so cool underneath this it says the evidence room where you could find some of your confiscated arms drugs and redacted Ooh. Underneath this, we got a picture of what looks like the inside of like the beginning of the station. We got a counter over here for something. Authorized personnel only. Uh, some sort of logo here. It looks like a combination of symbols. I'm not sure what that means so anybody in the comments could uh, let me know what that might mean it's kind of cool this looks like really like 1950s architecture and it's like never been updated that's like california in a nutshell there's like a lot of like really old buildings here and it's not that they haven't been like preserved it's just you know they haven't really like been updated they've just been like cleaned constantly like dusted down but it hasn't like been replaced that's kind of like california in a nutshell but yeah this looks pretty cool underneath that it says a relatively calm moment in the lobby of the lspd station enjoy them all you can you bet i will wouldn't it be cool like after every mission the station would change up a little bit you see like a bunch of new stuff that'd be awesome moving on here a lesson on ron's ai with ali how you doing ali my popular request one of the most influential voices in the programming of ready 
Xenonauts AI, Ali, has given his write-up on exactly how the game's AI functions and makes decisions based on the environmental factors. The AI system we use for them is what is called a utility-based AI system, a decision-making model. The concept behind the utility AI is to mathematically model human behavior in a computer program. Using numbers, formulas, and response curves, the human we want to model is called an agent or simply an AI. Each agent in the world, the environment has a list of decisions or what we call actions they want to make. Every frame we run through the list of actions and decide which one to pick and execute. That's the core AI loop. Inside each action, there is a list of considerations that make up what an action is mathematically and what ultimately determines the score for that action. Each consideration outputs a score, which will get accumulated using a score method at the end to output a final score for that action that will then be later used to pick the highest scoring action. The action will be the one to execute and run using another system called the activity system with a commitment time set so they don't oscillate in their decision making, acting indecisive from frame to frame. There is also a thing called commit interrupts. It is a list of actions that can interrupt the current action if it is being committed to, and they get evaluated every frame too. It gives us more control. The scoring method is just a list of four math operations. Additive, subtractive, multiplicative, and divisive. Really simple. Just add, subtract, multiply, or divide into the score accumulator. Math teachers always told me that I needed calculus and trigonometry and all this nonsense when all these guys are doing it just freaking the basic stuff. But anyways, it serves another setting that designers can tweak to mold the final action score. One example of what consideration could be is health. This is scored using a scoring function that we define. That scoring function takes in a world context and outputs a number. In this case, health, it is really simple. We do current max, which gives you a value, or in other words, a score, from a sliding scale between 0.0 to 1.0, which then can be optionally scaled by a weight to bias the action in the AI if we want. You can imagine other consideration having more complicated functions. The output of the scoring function is then mapped by the response curve and is used in the final score of the consideration. There are many curve presets to choose from. The default is a linear response, but you can have all sorts of easy curves like exponential, sinusoidal, etc. Or even have a hand curve. Or even better, we have the ability to implement your own custom curve function, which is pretty neat. The health of 0 0.09 altered by the shape of a curve can be a good or bad thing. Good being you probably don't need to take cover and you can risk taking certain actions, but bad thing if you want your health to always stay full so you find cover and regenerate using a stem others stems and ready or not now oh this doesn't happen in ron of course but just as an example of how looking at the same number can mean two different things interesting i don't know what most of this stuff means i kind of get it but not really but hey look a picture of how it somewhat operates not entirely sure what this is but according to this it's score which i assume is the score that they were talking about context break ai action decision context ai action decision context controller world get character target time another controller target Return value is valid. Exact is valid. Return node. I don't know what any of this stuff means. Health. Get max health. It's interesting. Hopefully the text underneath explains this a bit better. As you can imagine with a library of hundreds of considerations, using those and tweaking response curves is how we can get different personality types or behaviors out of our suspects and civilians. Some being more resistant to surrender than others or some being more eager to take cover or some that can be more suicidal if you don't de-escalate the situation quickly. And they show off more pictures here of what looks like maybe behavior or I'm not too sure AC constant one whatever that means fake float ver open ammo ammo armor Compliance, morale, interesting. And then there's another picture underneath this. So these are the considerations 0 through 7, gates 0 through 1. And I assume these are what these are. Two array elements as a target. Has target been yelled at? Eight array elements, no ammo left. I've actually seen a lot, a couple of suspects that have shot at me, but then they drop their weapon because they realize that they're out of ammo. That's actually really cool. I've definitely seen that. When threat is high, when tension is high, when morale is low, below 50%. That's when they execute themselves. The suppression near legs warning a shot. Oh! interesting i think that was a swap for thing like if you shot like at them or at one of their legs like they just end up giving up almost incapacitated stunning for a while too many swap visible cool 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 moving on here we have another concept in our system that i don't think i've seen anywhere in other people's utility implementations but it's hardly anything groundbreaking we call it gates it acts as a supplementary aid to considerations gates are similar to considerations but instead of returning a score they just return true or false open or closed the purpose of gates is to block off 
off actions that we don't want AI to consider, all gates must be open for the actions to be considered for scoring. Cooldown timers are one example where gates are useful. There is no way you could reasonably do this with considerations and weights. It needs to be a binary operation. Has the cooldown finished or not? The cooldown must be finished before considering said action. But when we didn't have this concept, we would have AI surrender to no stimulus or do certain actions that they would have been doing. And when you want to debug what was going on, all the scores seem reasonable and you could see why they did a certain thing. Gates help us control them a little more so as to not go wild and do unexpected things, which our designers like. And then they show another picture here, which is something that I still don't understand quite honestly, but I'm going to attempt to figure out. Let's see, settings here, exclude attacks since seconds, max distance, include friendly. Zero has been aggressive, been exposed to aggressive noise since five seconds. So I guess this is like, if this happens, he goes down this specific tree, I guess. Interesting. He continues on to say, the simple concept of using math and formulas to mold the outpost result to your liking. Using weights, different score methods, and response curves gives you a whole bunch of states that you could possibly program into AI manually, which in turn greatly affects the gameplay experience. Each AI will behave slightly different than our next. Our previous version of AI system was basically one large state machine at its core and could only ever be worked on by us, the programmers, if we wanted to progress. Implement better AI. Allow for designer freedom to alter AI behavior quickly in the editor without asking programmers to do simple things. A radical approach was needed to switch to utility, which took about six months to implement. However, we still use the state machine concept for concrete actions like moving to pick up a weapon on the floor or breaching a door, which has a lot of states. But the decision making aspect of AI, the brains if you will, is all utility based. We don't have to manually say if this then that, if this then do X. Instead, as outlined above, we give them a set of actions and rules to follow. Then they go about into the world and make decisions for themselves, which is pretty neat. And what feels like true AI, oh my god, they're becoming sentient. All we have to do on our side in the editor is set up their archetype, the definition personality of an AI, which houses the actions we want them to make. After we're done, we assign the archetypes to the specific AI in our data tables. We have about 50 archetypes and many AI variants. In a level share are similar or the small archetypes for many reasons, for simplicity's sake. We don't want to duplicate archetypes unnecessarily when we could just reuse the ones that work, or if we happen to take a liking to a particular archetype in the way they behave, etc. Plus the overhead of our team in managing all those archetypes, it's something we try to stay lead with. In conclusion, this concludes our 50th briefing. Be sure to tune into our next development news. And with that, that pretty much ends everything when it comes to Ready or Not's newest briefing or newsletter, however you want to call it. But hey, we're not quite done with Ready or Not just yet. Here's a quick thing that Mary G posted in the Discord. It says here, hey everyone, wanted to give a small preview of some of the crazy work we've been doing behind closed doors. It's been a while since my last post, but we were working nonstop to make quality happen, and we can't wait to share the things we are working on. Quality over quantity. Severe Vetas. I'm not sure if I said that right. I probably didn't. But hey, they showed off a picture here. And to be honest, at first when I saw this, I was like, is this another April Fool's joke? Because this actually looks like a bot asset, but I think it's just without the textures. That's why it kind of looks a little off to me. But somebody showed that the shoe that's right there is the one that they scanned in from the previous update. So I'm just like, oh, well, these can't be bot assets, obviously, because they're scanning them in. But yeah, this is the HRT MC work in progress, and it looks pretty cool. You got two different types of helmets. Uh, I think actually they're the same helmet, but one's just wearing a, uh, I'm not sure what you call it, cover? Ops car, I believe? Customization. I'm not sure if this is just customization, like we get to put on different types of helmets and shoes and stuff, or if it's just what the new model is going to look like. I hope it's the latter, but I guess we'll see. But that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it when it comes to Ready or Not News at the time of this recording. And uh, yeah, I am really excited to see this uh, new police station. I would explore every nook and cranny, not gonna lie. What are your guys' thoughts? I honestly did not understand a whole lot of the whole AI process. I mean, I kind of got some of it. Sounds really cool. And it's definitely something that I would like to learn, but I just don't have that kind of time. Or maybe I do have the time and I'm just not interested. But either way, tell me what your guys' thoughts are. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe and like the video and do all that jazz. And thank you all for coming out to watch. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.